Phil, let's talk, though, about more news out of uh, the Los Angeles City Council. Uh, and for our viewers, they may have seen this video already right. kind of on social media throughout the weekend uh, of member Kevin DeLeon getting into a fight with the protester. Take a look at some of this video. Okay, Phil, that is definitely something you do not see every day with your elected officials. Uh, I, I was pretty shocked by this, uh, and we can kind of, you know, go back and forth about, you know, who provoked it, who started it, but how is De Leon and his office responding to this? And are there going to be, you know, any charges filed with this? What's going on here? Well, first of all, that was at a, a family toy giveaway over the weekend in De Leon's district. You remember, this is the aftermath of that October leaked recording in which uh, De Leon and other council members and the head of the L.A. County Federation of Labor made some uh, remarks that were described and characterized as racist regarding uh, an adopted uh, black son of a white city council member. Huge controversy in Los Angeles. Remember, the head of the, uh, the president of the city council, Nuri Martinez, resigned. Kevin DeLeon uh, has chosen not to resign, despite almost universal calls for him to do so. Uh, he says that he needs to represent his district. And so there are people who are uh, protesters, but they take it to another level, Andrew. They're profane, the F word, they are in your face with the phones, trying to provoke you. I've seen it, I've been there, I've watched it happen. Uh, it's very, very controversial. And that's what happened the other night. And De Leon says that this guy actually got too far and, and head-butted him. And that De Leon reacted to that, and that was that scuffle that you saw. I spoke to LA Police Chief Michael Moore today about this specifically. He was at the Karen Bass event this morning. He said that they are investigating uh, and that the city attorney will ultimately make a decision on who, if anyone, to charge. But this is a very difficult situation. Uh, city council people, unlike the mayor, typically don't travel with security, for example, or like the governor, uh, or like the speaker of the house. Um, you know, and so they're saying that this is sort of a new reality, that these, these profane, aggressive protesters um, are showing up and disrupting something like a toy giveaway for families. Yeah, and Phil, uh, obviously some of the consternation stems from the fact that uh, uh, others that were heard uh, on that leaked audio, Kevin DeLeon, Gil Cedillo, uh, have not yet resigned, maybe never will, uh, their posts uh, on the city council, much like Nuri Martinez did, so much so that Gil Cedillo uh, released this statement today to the LA Times, uh, kind of rationalizing and at least explaining you know, why he is not resigning. He says most people find the subject of redrawing political boundaries based on census data as boring as watching paint dry. In Los Angeles, though, a year-old illegally recorded conversation about the subject touched off a political firestorm. On the tape, City Council President Nuri Martinez, Councilman Kevin De Leon, County Labor Federation Head Ron Herrera, and myself, all Latinos, spoke frankly about how districts based on the 2020 census could best represent the city's evolving ethnic balance. So you're seeing, Phil, uh, you know, at least some, I guess, rationalizations, explanations about why they will not be resigning. Well, in Gil Cedillo's case, who was a longtime Congress uh, councilman and a longtime public servant in California, he was defeated in his reelection uh, campaign. So he's out anyway. Uh, there's a new city council person in his seat, uh, one of 15 that make up the Los Angeles City Council. So Cedillo took it as a matter of pride to finish out his term, um, also continued to collect a paycheck in excess of $200,000 a year, and he felt that he didn't do anything wrong. And this is really the first uh, comment that he's made beyond uh, saying through his representatives that he was, this was the term that he used, Andrew, that he's in a period of reflection after this uh, leak was disclosed back in, uh, in October. But he basically said he didn't feel like he did anything that uh, he needed to resign over. 
All right, uh, Phil Schumann, as always, uh, we appreciate your time as we go into so many of these big national stories there in Los Angeles. And Phil, we'll check in again. Thanks so much. Okay. All right, uh, and also just want to put out uh, at least read out a little bit more uh, of the statement by Gil Cedillo that he released. Uh, and you can see there, uh, this was getting a, a lot of attention as well, this uh, paragraph. He says, my critics' warped zealotry isn't a sign of a growing movement for racial justice. It's a glaring problem. Satirist Trevor Noah recently came to the defense of singer-songwriter Lizzo, who used spaz out in a song. When told that the term was offensive to disabled people, she re-recorded the song with new lyrics. Nothing, however, satisfied her critics. Uh, and so that is getting a lot of attention there uh, from Cedillo. But we thank Fo Fox's Phil Schumann for breaking down those major stories in Los Angeles.